and welcome back to my channel for today's video i'm going to be discussing the costs as well as the timeline so this is pertaining to my journey therefore it's the amount that i paid for the entire process as well as how much time each step of the journey took for me mind you when i did everything it was still during covid the borders in china were not fully open so do keep that in mind meaning that there are extra things that i did there are things that made the process more costly and that made the process take a little bit longer that would not apply for you but you will see um as you follow along in the video and some things you'll see that maybe when you are doing it if you actually plan and prepare and do things in a timeless manner you won't have to um what's the word like paying ridiculous costs if i can put it in that way lack of a better word so i wrote down my notes and this video is going to be very detailed it's going to have dates and it's going to have exact amounts but towards the end um i won't have the exact dates but i will have the exact duration and yes one more thing before we carry on is that the detailed costs and the detailed timeline is mainly for the things that were done while in South Africa and the flight. And I will also mention how much I paid for quarantine, even though you will not be required to pay for that. But this video does not include costs when you arrive in China, for example, um, how much you should have for the first two or three months, either for rent or for day to day living okay let's get into the video here's my notes so prepared okay so this is the order that i'm going to be doing everything in my saka tefl pcc Durko, consulate medicals invitation letter visa flight and then quarantine i'll just drop it just for interest sake and i will obviously look down a lot because this it was a while ago and i'm not going to memorize everything <laughs> okay so starting with saka the very first email I sent it on the 29th of April. It was the email that I got directly from the website only to find out that they were in the process of changing the email. So when I was doing, so when I sent the initial email, it went through successfully on the 29th of April. But when I did a follow up, um, I got that, that bounce, but that error message saying that this email address does not exist only to find out they changed the email address. So the official first email that I sent to the correct Saka email address was on the 12th of may and then i paid 610 rand for the verification and then i received the digital verification by email on the 22nd of june saka dropped it off at my delivery service and my delivery service confirmed receipt of my verification three days later the drop off was for free and then because at the time i hadn't decided whether i'm going to south korea or china i requested a reprint which i paid 100 rand for the reprint i requested it on the 27th of june and then i received it on the 4th of july and i paid 100 rand separately for it but if you know you want two copies you can just do everything at once the drop off was of course for free again and my courier company received it in about two or three days after i got the the email verification the second one okay so that is saka timeline and cost of saka park it over here number two tefl i did mention this in my previous video that i did my tefl a while ago i did not pay anything because the company i was working for paid for that and it did not take a long time but because it was a while ago i don't remember how long it took so <laughs> that was nice and short park that here Number three, my PCC police clearance certificate application was done officially on the 3rd of May. So it depends on the police station that you go to. Some police stations, you can literally go there and they do the application on the day. With my one, there was only one person designated to doing police clearance um, certificate applications. And when I went there, he was not there. So I basically had to make an appointment. So I had to come on a certain day and at a certain time. So that day ended up being the 3rd of May, I paid 160 and in order to fast track the process, I delivered the, I took the fingerprints and I delivered them myself to the CRC in Pretoria. I used overnight Korean service the very same day, 3rd of May, I paid 140 and it arrived at CRC the next day, which is, which was the 4th of May. Okay, so I received my first PCC SMS on the 12th of May. The SMS was basically telling me that they received my application and that it was being processed. And then the second SMS, I received it on the 24th of June. This SMS was telling me that my PCC had been finalized. And I told my courier company, um, funny enough, whenever they went to go collect the PCC, it was not there. 
they just kept on saying no it's not there until i got someone else to collect it because it did not make sense i had the sms i told them all of that um but when someone else collected it for me they got it so with the Korean company, I feel like they just have a list of names and they give the list. And at the CRC, they basically look at, I think, the latest things that they have there, what they have on. Yeah, I don't know. This is me assuming, guys, assumption. And then if they don't see it within that pile, I feel like they send them back. And the Korean company, because they have a lot of names, I don't think they really dig, you know. Because for me, it was that situation. They just say, no, it's not there. But when the person went to go check for me, miraculously, it was there. So this person, I know that they will give, like, not just my name, like, my ID number, my details. And they will let them know that I received the email on the 24th of June. Why, like, have I, has, why has the Korea services struggle to get my thing so long story short the person was able to get it for me I remember at the time i was applying for i wasn't sure which i was applying for between south korea and china so i got two police clearances so the first one i already paid for but i asked this person to get a reprint and they charged me an additional 160 i think 160 for the reprint and then i contributed 100 rand to this person's petrol and although the second sms was received on the 24th of june it was only collected on the 14th of july imagine because every time the courier service went there they said it's not there but luckily for 14th of july this person collected it for me and dropped it off at the courier services so the courier service now has my saka and my pcc remember my table is not part of the mix because i had done it a while ago and it already had the Durko and the embassy stamp so it was good to go now we park that over here pcc over here the next step is Durko. Durko doesn't charge anything for the services but at this point i had my pcc and my sucker at the delivery service so for them to drop off and collect my items they charged me 400 rand for that service they dropped off my documents on the 19th of July and then on the 7th of September they communicated to me that um, they had received my documents back from Durkholm and then I don't know what happened from the 7th of September I think maybe both sides are to blame I think I did have a bit of a delay on my side as well and I think they also had a bit of delay from their side if I'm being honest because they were quite busy from what I could see because they received my documents 7th of September I only received it in Cape Town 16th of September so yeah but anyway so that was the delivery company sending it to me and i don't remember how much i paid for this but i think maybe let's just say 110 for now so dirk home pocket over here and then i contacted the consulate they said that everything will take two weeks and i dropped off my things on i think the 16th of september and that would mean that collection should be on the 30th of september and if you are in china you know that is not possible i think definitely not now that i am in china because that is the time whereby the mid-autumn festival begins but i did not know that so i thought i was going to collect 30th of september only to find out no they're closed for that holiday so it ended up being delayed for just over a week because even when they came back they told me to come collect on the 13th of october so i collected on the 13th of october they don't charge anything at the consulate where they go to the consulate to embassy they don't charge let's just say 100 rand for petrol or transport costs let's park the consulate here and then now let's head on over to the medicals the medicals in total took two days because i didn't i did everything public so my first consultation whereby they did the general check and filling in most of the form was 515 rand my bloods were 810 rand that's only because i added an extra thing you would probably pay around 600 rand but i wanted them to also test for my iron so it ended up being 810 my x-rays were 715 and then my follow-up consult plus ecg by the way i don't think i needed a follow-up consult even you i really don't think you need it but okay i'm telling you what has already happened follow-up consult plus ecg was 429 at the time it was a requirement to be vaccinated so i went to a public clinic for that and that was free not that the private wasn't free but i was just close at the time and everything took two days if you do your x-rays whatever now the following day um it was ready so the total of the medicals was 2529 rand okay, let's park our medicals here the next thing is the invitation letter obviously you don't pay anything for that I received the invitation letter three weeks after providing the recruiter of the school with all of my documents. Three weeks I received it. So now it's time to pack, 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 pack. So now it's time to pack and then 
this part i don't know what happened this part you know what i think firstly i had a lot going on at the time if i'm being entirely honest because if i had let's say more time and more planning i feel like i could have avoided certain things and certain costs that i'm about to say now so i was in cape town right so at the time because of the whole covid thing there was only one place whereby we can do our visa applications which was the Joburg one so because they were doing biometrics and your fingerprints and stuff we were told that you physically have to be there which was funny because by the time i got there i saw other agents doing it for other people but i didn't ask for details actually but yeah but anyway that's that um so i flew to Joburg and accommodation i didn't pay because i had family there and because i booked last minute i think that initial ticket was like two thousand yeah and i've never paid 2000 rand for a ticket from cape town to Joburg. i was that person who paid like 600 and something because i always booked ahead of time or i just found cheap tickets like sometimes you don't even have to book that much ahead of time i don't know how things are now but i was that person who paid like 680 for a flight between cape town and Joburg. but now i paid 2000 and this was so that i can go and do my visa application and this is where i fucked up I fucked up because I ended up having to go to Joburg twice because the first time I went I wasn't ready because you know what I could have done I could have just packed all of my stuff gone to Joburg done the application wait for the result and then fly to China but I went to Joburg I did the application and then I unfinished business in Cape Town so I came back and then I went again okay so for my first trip I said it was 2000 rand for that flight the actual visa application was 1228 rand and the um, appointment i made it like let's say i made make the appointment today i received the appointment date exactly one week later so i go on that day and let's say i go on that particular day the visa was ready the following week yeah i had i made a tiny i don't know whose mistake it was but there was a a small mistake that was made so my visa delayed a bit but it didn't delay that much so it's safe to say either one or two weeks but the average person is literally one week and currently i know someone who went just before one week like let's say they dropped it off let's say they did the application friday and then they collected it the following week thursday so you can estimate one week for you so i did it and then i had someone pick it up and then i went back to cape town and then that's when i finally packed for like not coming back to Cape Town anytime soon. And then I booked my second flight, which was also very, very last minute. That flight cost 2,349. Not only because it was last minute, but I also added extra baggage or luggage or whatever. Okay, cool. Okay, so now we can park our visa and flights over here. Okay, so other things that I spent on would be, oh, at the time, because of COVID, they told us that it is required for us to wear the N95 masks. And because of last minute again, my sister was the one um, that was actually getting it for me, but she couldn't find it. Like, she really, really couldn't find it. And then there was one place she could find it at, which was an expensive place. I don't know if it's the brand she bought was expensive or the place was expensive. I don't know what. But she ended up paying 500 Rand for 10 masks, meaning it was 50 Rand per mask. Yep. <laughs> meaning it was 50 Rand per mask. And to this day, I've got eight masks left. By the way, when I got onto my flight, only to find that the fellow passengers were all wearing their masks that you could see cost 3 Rand 50. Was that not a surprise? I was like, oh, literally. But I was like, no, it's cool. Um, and then other costs, if you're going to be buying things, some people don't need to buy stuff because let's say you pack your clothes, your toiletries yeah if you're gonna be buying things like me at the time it was winter the people were saying that it wasn't that easy this like in china to get like meds and stuff like that because of like the whole covid thing and it also just been winter so i bought meds and a few goodies from sa i don't remember how much that was but let's just estimate it at 1.5 but this is not compulsory you decide if you need extra stuff and the day before my flight we were required to do the PCR test, which I paid 600 rand for. It was very quick, but very painful. And then, now onto the flight. <laughs> Before I say my flight price, okay? Oh, why am I spitting? Before I say my flight price, you need to keep in mind that at the time, flights, like, the supply and demand were not 
they were not matching you know the demand was higher I don't like to do this on camera. The demand was higher than the supply. And also because the borders were not really open, so it was limited flights and the flights were expensive. The flights were so, so expensive. There were flights for like 100,000 Rand and even more. Like, I don't even want to say the highest flights that I saw because you're literally going to think I'm crazy. Like, you know, there's some family members that even when I told them the flight prices, they ended up helping me look because they thought like, I don't know, they thought maybe I don't know how to Google, I don't know, how to, like, they, yeah, but they also saw for themselves that, you know, the flight prices are crazy. Literally, I was seeing 100k on the regular. And, yeah, so by the time that I booked, I even felt lucky for getting a flight price for the amount that I got it for. I booked the flight for 34,000 rands. So, yeah, let's park the flight over here. So now I'm going to literally total everything up and give you guys a total and compare what I paid and what you can possibly pay considering that there's certain things that you do not have to cover, okay? We are going to say 610 plus 100 plus 160 plus 140 plus 160 plus 100 plus 400 plus 110 plus 100 plus 2,529, plus 2,349, plus 2,000, plus 1,228, plus 500, plus 600, plus 1,500, gives us a grand total of 12,586, excluding the flight, plus the flight ticket of 34,000 was 46,586. So that is an estimate of how much I paid. This is excluding quarantine, which you don't need to worry about. Um, but quarantine was five for me was 500 rmb a day and i stayed there for like other six or seven days and this also excludes my data my airtime my transport costs excluding the flight like if i'm taking public transport or if i'm using a car and petrol money it excludes all of that so keep that in mind right and then now let's try and get an estimate of how much it will cost minusing all of the covid things that made it so expensive so we said the grand total of everything including the flight is 46,586 rands so you will minus 2,349 because the other from my understanding you have to double check there's more than one visa center so you don't necessarily have to fly to do your visa application so remember i flew twice to joburg so you minus 2,349 and then minus 2,000 and then you minus 600 for the PCR test, you minus 500 for the masks. If you want a mask, you can be Mr. and Mrs. 350, like everyone else on my flight. Okay. Minus 200 for the iron test, it's not compulsory. Um, minus 260 for the reprints, remember 100 Saka, 160 police clearance. And then, since I paid 34k for my flight, you can literally get a flight for half that price. If... You, like even yeah you can literally get a ticket for that price and when booking do your research on booking tickets like a good day a good time and to do it ahead of time so let's just say half that price you can get a ticket less than that you can get a ticket more expensive than that but i guarantee you it's definitely possible to get a ticket even less than seventeen thousand rent but for now let's just put 17 so let's say minus seventeen thousand the total is twenty three thousand six hundred what's that oh the total is 23,677. Yeah. Potentially for someone who wants to get an idea, this is not set in stone, but 23,677 excluding data, airtime, and local, like either taxi, bus, train, petrol costs, if I could put it that way. And the time frame, I would say for me in total, it was about five months. I don't know how the backlog of everything is now, but I assume that it's a little bit better okay and the last thing when planning everything no matter how much you do your research in terms of budget and in terms of time frame when it comes to money always budget a little bit more than what you expect to spend and when it comes to time frame budget more time than what you expect it to take because there's always something that comes up and i'm not wishing anything bad to come up but it's one of those things sometimes it's not major things but like there's always something that comes up 
to help others right because this is just my experience i would like to request something from you guys so that we can just share certain information it's also just like nice to see i guess especially for other people um that are preparing for this journey can you guys regardless of whether you are still in the process of coming the site or if you're if you are ready the site can you share your costs how much it costs for you to do things especially something like a flight ticket so maybe tell us how much you paid for your flight ticket and then just say which year it was whether it's 2020 2023 whichever year it was um yeah just share or you can share like medicals private and then how much that was flight and then how much you paid for your flight stuff like that you can add extra detail if you want but you don't need to but it would be nice to add extra detail yeah i think it would be nice for people who especially want to compare because i know my experience will give other people an idea but it's also nicer to just see a variety of those things i don't know what else because other things will be standard for example the verification is standard the pcc is standard but yeah you can let us know how much it costs even if you know how much time you spent or how much data you spent the more info the merrier like regardless what it is whatever you're comfortable with sharing in terms of costs um in your process for coming to china bye bye